Dell. Uh, we typically typically hear uh, matters that, that as an appellate body, uh, people are denied something and then they come to us and ask for relief of some sort. Um, and, and, uh, and that's somewhat what happened here, although uh, in this matter, we, we sometimes get, get asked to, to do things a little bit out of sequence. Um, and, and as the uh, state guidelines tell us, um, uh, they say, except in certain circumstances, an applicant must might be aggrieved by an actual decision or action taken by the enforcement officer. The exceptions occur where an applicant has already submitted an application for subdivision, site plan, or special use permit approval, which requires an area variance in connection with that approval. And, and that's how we happen to get involved here as far as what I'm sure a great many of you would view have been part of the police before the court. Um, at any rate, uh, we met um,
so the, the, it's a very small segment of this that we've been asked to consider is, is, whether, is whether or not um, we can give the area variance for, for five feet uh, as applied to uh, these vacant land adjacent to the, to the site that, that, that energy advantage is looking to, to uh, save their project about. Um, and so in, in, many, in many respects, um, we sort of have blinders on as far as the, the entire uh, scope of the project. Not that, not that we're not interested in it or are concerned with many concerns that, that you folks have as well. Uh, but, but we are, are passing the buck on to the planning board to be truthful because they, they have the expertise and, and, and knowledge to, to, to treat this from a site plan uh, vantage point. They consider all the uh, uh, issues pertaining to floodplain development, uh, uh, noise, uh, traffic, everything else. Um, so so we're, we're sort of in the civil tool category here. Um, and, and so that's, that's where we find or something. Um, yeah, I guess I, I guess if I could, uh, we, we will ultimately uh, open this up for, for some public discussion as well. I'll probably ask people to limit their comments to a to a to a three minute uh, uh, link so we don't uh, have too many more sermons on the line. Uh, and, and, uh, and and first, I would ask the uh, uh, folks from uh, NG Advantage to perhaps. Uh, Offer some insight into the into the setback issue, um, and, and assume that that they'll have an awful lot of time to discuss the, the more involved aspects of all of this. Um, and, and, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, uh, and then certainly, yeah, project overview would would, would not hurt at all, um, because I know I know a lot of the concerns have have been addressed already. Thank you. Uh, my name is Gary Myers, for the record. Um, Chief Operating Officer for NGA Bank. And I'm going to do a quick overview of the region of the world of the project. And then have Leon Griffiths and Griffiths and Jimin uh, come forward and talk specifically about the setback and uh, variants that were requested. So, um, we are in the advantage. We can import natural gas via shows. Um, we have gotten we're in a lease with a property owner in the town of Benton. The last piece of property on West Service Road that we were working with the line. I'm sorry, but I'm kind of getting older and I really can't hear, so if you would address us with a little louder voice, I really would appreciate it. We don't have a PA system. Yeah, I mean, I'm. Yeah, I'll speak louder, okay? That's the best I can do. I do have to address the board. That's good. That's okay. And we can we can we can hear you well. <laughs> so again, we're a natural gas. We fit the properties for a lot of reasons, and we'll be going through those in the, with the planning board. But specifically, the Millennium Pipeline runs through the property, and we need to tap that to pull the gas out of it, put it into our trailers to deliver to customers in other places in New York State and beyond. That's that's our business in the nutshell. Uh, pipelines have been canceled. It, we are an alternative to that to get clean, green gas to businesses to, in some cases, help us evolve in this advanced market. So that's the overview of the company. We plan on putting a number of compressors to the pipeline, take the gas out of it, puts it directly in the truck, the truck leaves, when it's empty, it comes back and we fill the truck. It really is a trucking terminal, no different than going to a warehouse and filling it up with furniture. So that's, that's the operation. Okay. Again, very only for this year is a setback out of equipment, but we were running out of room. There are lots of weapons, there's a lot of things to consider. We cannot go into the pipeline right away. So the property that we're leasing on, in, in this area wasn't large enough. We have to move it back to get other setbacks in accordance with uh, National Fire Code. So to do that, we've got our equipment up and we've got into this 
We didn't even know that until we finally got you know, two or three comments into us to understand what we needed for all of our setbacks when they finally came together. We decided we needed a variance because we didn't have the, the, the right clearance from, from the adjacent government. That's where we are with it. Eric, just, just for some pressure, you had originally started with your professors over there on the left hand side. Yeah. As you know, as you're going through site planning, review, all of the things changed. Uh, so we moved it over to this side and we did that with one up against it. There were a lot of reasons for that. We would not have been able to get our equipment to the site plan right away. That's why we decided to come here. And, and part of the but it played a huge part of it, too. We would stand right on, the, right on the doorstep of the park with all of the noisy equipment. There is basically very little noise here. This is just gas going through a hose, so it doesn't make a whole lot of noise. The noise that comes from the site will be coming from the yellow area on the, on the chart. And again, we're going to get into that with the planning board okay. pretty soon. Yeah, so, because that, that really caused the whole step back issue. It sure did. It was moving that equipment. <coughs> and we were two and a half months into the whole process when it happened. You want to see what's the right there. Okay. The main thing was that as we moved it back for the, the line of sight and the status there, it was further back out of the way at the same time for the noise study that was done. It just helps out that much more. More to get it further away from bars, further away from the residents, and further away from the road. And again, this is the least portion of us currently in the lease, so that it totally eliminates the setback. That's all we're asking. And this lease has been secured. That, that lease has been secured. Can we ask questions? Yes. I'd like to know how many compressors are there? How many compressors are you planning to build on the property? And if you would please state, state your name for me, I appreciate it. My name is Vera Scroggins. And I'd like to know how many compressors, how big is the property, how many acres? And how close is it to the closest homes? How many feet from the closest homes? Again, if you, if you want to address it, if, if, if you if you would be so kind as to okay. at, least, at least briefly, you know, I would I would imagine they can get into more detail a little bit later, but uh, yeah. So our initial, initially we'll be putting in four compressors at total build out will be 12. Can answer that question? Um, go ahead. Could you, what was your uh, So you're going from four to 12, and what time period will you have 12? Uh, hopefully in the next 18 months, that's the goes So you have 12 compressors. What are the size of the compressors? What kind of horsepower? 500 inch. And then how much, how much acreage are you putting all of this site on? Five point three acres, and then how close is the closest homes, footage-wise? From the north area, I recall it's eight hundred and fifty-three feet to the nearest the nearest home. Eight hundred and fifty-three feet, and then do you have a, a noise ordinance in the zoning board that they have to adhere to, that they can't go beyond a certain um, noise decibel to the nearest home? Within, 
So you're saying there's no noise ordinance for this area? I, that means they can be as loud as they want? I think, but no, there's a, there's a, it's a, it falls into the category of a reason, reasonable, reasonable uh, noise limitations. And I think, I think there are probably, probably other noise, noise factors that, that exist in some place that, that uh, so what is reasonable according to the zoning board? We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't have any opinion about it. Uh, we, we, are, we are an appellate body. We don't, we don't create the zoning. Zone, so zoning is a legislative activity conducted by the town board. We, we, have, we have no, no jurisdiction. Is there anybody here from the town board in the audience or that they can answer that question? These questions are all of the planning board, not the ZBA. I think I think that's probably correct too. Um, Mr. Hamlin would have suggested that, that these really are going beyond the scope of our concerns here. Well, I'd like to ask this company: Are they going to be injecting mercaptan at the site into the gas as it's coming out of the Millennium yeah. Line? Do yeah. you have mercaptan being injected? And again, you're, you're also running on, uh, along towards the end of your, uh, your two minutes. <laughs> but uh, but but uh, we we did we did uh, as to that early on as a, as a conversational piece. Uh, yes, yes, they will. Uh, you will find ultimately in their discussions further with the planning board that they've engaged a, a company uh, with their compression equipment and, and uh, whose specific interest is in uh, odor abatement and, and that sort of thing. Um, I. I, I, I if I recall right here in the original hearing, my my music uh, was along the board toward the line that the, the town of Shenango septic system probably will spell more than than uh, uh, what this is going to generate. But that's again, that's just my personal fucking flash um, So yes, they will. That'll be discussed later. Sure, this is, you know, we will be addressing that. It was a very specific item but in the 239. We've done noise study and we can address all the others. Okay. So. Do you also have a uh, air emission study, uh, Advantage representatives? Are you are you applying to the DEC for air emissions, and any kind of application to the DEC for this project? Again, we're, 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 we, we have uh, 20 issues from the county that we will be addressing all of those issues. So the answer is yes, it's just a matter of whether we want to address those here or in the planning board. I think that's really, really, these are, these are all valid questions, all valid concerns and points of interest, but I, I, I think the presentation that, uh, that and, and, and information to pre be presented to the planning board following our our hearing uh, is when those are properly addressed. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, I was going to say the emergency for the company to get this variance. I'm not exactly sure what the emergency is for the town. Uh, one of the concerns that I've not heard addressed is the effect on uh, traffic flow. And I want to bring to the attention that between Shenango Forks, Shenango Valley, Harpersville, that the bridge on route going across the river on Route 12 is a main thoroughfare for students to get back and forth between Port Dick, the high school, uh, students coming from Forks into the city of Bayview. On a good day now, at certain times, you're lucky if you get through in 10 minutes because there's kids going to school, coming back from school, like lunch time in the morning, in the evening. So what happens when you have 100 trucks or 200 trips on that road during those hours? So I would suggest that the urgency to approve this variance doesn't exist in the town. That in fact, we should think about and look at the implications to our students and to the traffic because children will be delayed. Buses will have to start earlier. They will arrive later. And God forbid there's a problem with a tank of truck full of natural gas on a bridge with a bunch of school buses nearby. 
So I'm only suggesting that we hold off the urge to see for the town and perhaps do a little more public investigation into the need for this and the wisdom of it. Thank <laughs> you. 
a track record of uh, installing such facilities in, in other areas. Uh, this is their, their first their compression facility, and so um, the information that we reviewed on, on their operation the first time around seemed to be com comprehensive, well reviewed by others, and, and uh, There's a limited amount of risk in, 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 in many things, and because of the nature of the material, there's, there's certainly a heightened degree of risk with this. There, this is also a highly regulated uh, field, and, and, and one which has a lot of people that watch it, to, including folks like yourself. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, I just had a kind of a procedural question. Will the planning board allow for public comments or questions of the applicant uh, prior to their decision? That is up to the planning board. Okay. How they conduct their meeting is, uh, is, is they, 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 this is a public hearing, um, theirs, theirs is a meeting. Uh, they, they, they may or may not uh, take that on as a social chat opportunity. Thank you. So even though my question is not re completely relevant to uh, the scope of your uh, decision today. I'm wondering if I could ask the uh, applicant a question. Okay, so my question is, um, we have another operator in Pennsylvania called XNG in Forest Lake. And they have two compressors, only one of them is running, and they're already doing 50 trucks a day from one compressor. So if it scales up, what's 50 times 12? That's 600 trucks potentially coming from your facility. That's a major concern that I have if it scales the same way. So, but my question for you is, what we've figured out that XNG is doing, XNG sold the project as the same way you're selling this one. Uh, that is to say that, oh, we're gonna be taking this gas and we're gonna be de uh, delivering it to local customers. What they're really doing is, they've really implemented a virtual transmission line to get around, like this gentleman, who was the one that gave the, you were, gave the presentation before, yes? So you said, we can't, build, we can't build these pipelines. You're right, because the people don't want the pipelines. So now what we found that XNG is doing is they're delivering, they're taking the gas from the production fields in Pennsylvania, and they're taking it up to Mannheim, and they're in injecting it onto the Iroquois. So what I'm asking you is, do you, have lo do you really have local customers that will support 12 compressor stations worth of trucks? Uh, leaving this 600 trucks a day, or is your plan, in fact, to take your gas and run it up to the Iroquois or some other a pipeline and inject the gas into a transmission line? That's my question. The answer is yes. We have an intention to do that as well. However, we've got three New York-based customers as we speak. We are hiring tomorrow, hopefully, a salesperson from this area to sell gas to local customers. So, but not going to lie to you, yes, we have, there's money to be made. It is a way of getting gas to people who need it east of here. Not going to lie to you, that, that's the truth. And I'm always, we're always going to be truthful with it. And where are you going to inject it and what, what I line? Don't, I don't even have it. We don't have a place yet. I mean, that's why it's a future plan. We've never done it. We've never done what you, what you described. The base business is for industrials and commercials, facilities. Any facility. Or, or, or region that doesn't have access to pipeline natural gas is currently using fuel oil, coal, or propane. You can spare me all that because I, I know but that is our customer base. You know that's the those are the customers in which that's what you which we're supplying today, and that's the customer base that our base business will be based on here out of Binghamton. That's what XNG told us, and we found out it was a lie. That's well, XNG. they do have customers also. They have local customers. The vast majority of their business is, is production to pipeline. They are not delivering it. Uh, in quantity to local businesses. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. My name is Becky Smith, and I'm in Chenango Bridge. I just have kind of a twofold question. I know all of you, you know, have gotten on the planning board because you're, you want to see the betterment of the community. You want to make this a welcoming community. You want to make it a safe community that people want to move into. And so I'm really wondering, what exactly are the benefits to this community to have this come in here? And secondly, nobody wants accidents to happen. I'm sure you guys are 
try very diligently to make sure there aren't any accidents, but we all know, every single one of us knows there are oils, there's spills, there's explosions, accidents happen, and no matter how well we plan for them, they, they happen. So what would the planning board, what plans do you have in case there is an accident? How are you going to safeguard the health of the people that live near there? And, and it, it, so there's two questions. How is it going to better the community and how, if and when an accident happens, which I think it's likely they would be one, what are you going to do about that? Is there a fund set aside? Is there some sort of plan in place to address those issues? I think those things should be in place first before we even talk about having them come in. Well, that's, a, that, that's a really concern. Again, we, we're at the Zoning Board of Appeals and not the Planning Board. Uh, and so well, I'm, I'm sure the Planning Board <coughs> considers such aspects of, of every uh, application and, and every project that's, that's, uh, that's considered. Uh, that's, that's their industry. But what is the benefit going to be for the people in the community to have this here? <coughs> Uh, to, to, to some extent, I mean, I, I burn fuel oil. I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not having to get natural gas. I love natural gas. You know, when I, when I was a kid, uh, there was a, a green meter that had gas coming through it, and I, my parents never had to worry about whether they were going to run out of fuel oil or not. Um, but, but I'm not going to get natural gas. Um, and, and so, uh, somebody. There, there are customers who desire natural gas as, as, as a superior means of fuel to, uh, to coal, to oil, to, to what they have in terms of uh, combustion and, and, uh, and cost and everything else. But that's, again, that's, that's not our, that's not our, our, our concern here at this point. Yes, sir. Greetings, I'm Walter Kang. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak with you tonight. So I urge you uh, and request that you take no action on granting any variances uh, with all respect to the proposed project. Um, so as you can see, I just basically generated the environmental database report for the proposed site. You can see it immediately adjoins a New York State hazardous substance waste disposal site called Isley Brothers Dump. You can see that they documented extensive contamination at the site involving reportedly uh, volatile organic chemical disposal. Um, and they basically never cleaned up this site uh, to the applicable standards. You can see also that this site would drain into the river. Because of the unusual configuration of this property, it would actually cross the property in all likelihood on the way to the river. You can also see that there are a variety of sites up gradient, and if that contamination was the Hillcrest site link, that migrated toward the river would also uh, pollute this site. So I believe as a matter of public policy, it is much better to resolve all of the matters in one fell swoop, not to do a piecemeal, uh, number one, as you may know, these pipelines frequently catch on fire, blow up, have uncontrolled releases. Toxic targeting, my company, is an environmental database firm. We get the New York State Department of Environment Conservation spill data. We typically provide it to engineers and consultants. I'm going to email you the report I generated today. So you can see that many of these problems never get cleaned up to the applicable standards. The Millennium Pipeline, uh, follows the alignment of a former crude oil pipeline built by the Rockefellers in 1881. Uh, Mike Benzini helped break the story last October that this pipeline has leaked extensively, it was never cleaned up. I was just in Van Etten a couple weeks ago, the pipeline is literally laying in a guy's drainage ditch. And so we've requested now that uh, Governor Cuomo require this pipeline to be fully investigated or remediated. My company has documented compressor station problems uh, with petroleum distillates, past dumping practices all across the state of New York. This is the one at 219 Ellis Hollow Creek Road in my own town. You can see it was never cleaned up to the applicable standards. Excuse me, I'm a little confused as far as the, the, uh, the, prior, the prior petroleum pipeline is what you seem to be citing, like in Manhattan, the one that's in the guy's ditch. Is that, is that so it's a combination. Pipeline, is that the Millennium Pipeline? So it's a 
combination of the Millennium Pipeline following this alignment of this ancient 1881 pipeline and the problems only recently came to light. And it only got press attention last October. Uh, so you can go to ToxicTargeting.com, you can see now we're pushing very hard to get the governor to investigate or mediate all these problems in one fell swoop. And I just wanted to underscore that again, it sounds so good, oh, we have a compressive station, it'll be totally fine, we're never going to be any problems. But the reality is, based on the DC zone data, that many of these compressive stations cause extensive problems and are very, very difficult to remediate. And again, they're all over the state of New York. So again, for all of these reasons, I urge you, don't just assume that the DC is going to manage these problems. You know, it's just honky dory. It's just not the record. I got nothing against these merging, you know, the good name of these officials, but that's just the inherited legacy that we have in New York. And you can see the data. Point blank, plain as day. All of these issues, I believe, should be addressed in one fell swoop before any variances are granted, any approvals are granted. This is a much more complicated matter, I believe, than the public has been led to believe. Thank you very much. Today, Governor Cuomo announced a new microgrid power plant to be built and independently operated in the 98 acre state plaza in Albany. Governor Cuomo praised this new microgrid power plant as a safe, clean burning natural gas plant that will remove 25,600 tons of greenhouse gas, or the equivalent to 5,000 cars a year. The governor states this plant will save nearly $3 million a year in energy costs just for the campus. The plant built on Sheridan Ave in Albany will be within close proximity to several elementary, middle, and high schools as well as the University of Albany itself. I ask this board to consider and question itself if natural gas infrastructure is safe in Albany, then why not here? It is my understanding that you have all the information you need to determine and make decisions based on the facts and planning and presentations in this company. I read the concerns of the opposition and I recognize them as the same concerns used to stop natural gas drilling in New York, truck traffic and children. Where is that concern in Albany? No hearings. Every day, hundreds of trucks travel up and down this highway, past our schools, every single day. A few more, whether it be 100 or 600, isn't going to make that much of a difference. They carry fuel to thousands of rural customers, including myself, where I paid $5.11 last year per gallon of propane. I want natural gas. Why the I voyage now? Had the pipelines been approved, then we wouldn't be here today. Some of the people here take pride in shutting down those pipelines. Perhaps this proposal would not be an issue at all. What would you do if the fuel you were denied or the cost became so high you had to go without it? I listened to the mayor of Port Crane talk about truck safety and safety. And I also listened to the company on the radio. They both were on the Bob Joseph show. And if you listen to both shows, the mayor had some legitimate complaints or concerns. I complained concerns about safety. And if you listen to to the company on the, the CEO on the Today Show, which was at 9 30 or 10 30 this morning, 10 15, I believe it was, they talked and mitigated every one of the mayor's concerns. Uh, how they're going to, uh, people are talking about fuel. It's going to be an enclosed uh, facility, it's, it, 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 they're going to be capturing everything they put out. Uh, I listened. The noise levels. According to the company uh, CEO that talked on the radio today, the noise levels are so low that they're not even a concern to OSHA when the plant opens up. They, they said that uh, air protection will be optional. Uh, also, the planning board has the ability to put a noise ordinance in place prior to the building being built, just like they did in Windsor on that compression, uh, compression station in Windsor, New York. 
Uh, all I see are advantages. Traffic means customers to our area, to our stores and our restaurants. 150 new high end jobs, from what I understand, is going to be close to $10 million annual based on a year. Right here in our community, add no air taxes to our community. We'll give relief to the taxpayers here already. I ask that this board, I'm sorry, I can't read one already. <laughs> I ask this board uh, to vote in favor of this proposal to step out of the dark of fear monitor based opinions and vote for wants on the merit of the project, the facts before you. All energy benefits all men. A lack of energy will darken lives. Thank you. Do we have your name? Sir, do we have your name? Victor Furman? Sure. I'll give you this if you give us the plan of work. If they can't read it. Excuse 
Ma'am, I, I, need, I need to get your name. Uh, Joyce Pedroia. Anytime they can reduce that cost, mm -hmm. what that means is that company gets to stay viable and stay open. They can either they can reinvest those funds back into that facility, and then to recreate jobs, add expansion, and, and continue on the product line. So what we're doing is we have customer base based upon economics, and then then the fact that it's green. Understand? I have, I have 35 years of industrial experience in a couple of different companies. I can't imagine anyone. Having a, a facility without natural gas. Thank you. Hello, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm Tom Homa. Uh, I live on uh, HOMA. Uh, I live on Proctor Homer, which is great to be here for you. Thank you. Hi. Uh, uh, my name is William Bowen. Uh, my father actually owned property that borders uh, with the proposed NG site. Um, wanted to say I'm 100% pro this business. Uh, I think it's going to be great tax base for the community. I was driving down Hustle Parkway the other day and I pulled up behind a trailer that's owned by one of their competitors driving down Hustle Parkway with 
more people, more schools, more parks, and Port Dick, Fenton, and the town of Shenango combined. And no one would even know. And they're doing that right now. And the only difference is Vesto is getting nothing for it. These guys are coming and they're offering to move into your community, offer a lot of tax base, which there's by a show of hands, who thinks they, uh, their taxes are too low and you want them to go up? <laughs> okay, going in the room. So they're going to bring tax base and jobs to the community, which is a great thing. I mean, everywhere, this community struggles on a regular basis. No one can find a job. No one. People are moving out of New York in droves because of regulation and because of things like this. I mean, here these guys want to bring jobs to the community, bring tax base to the community. It's a great thing for, for the infrastructure that they're going to put into this town of Fenton in an industrial zone area down there is going to bring more tax base to Fenton than probably 200 new homes, which is never going to happen if there isn't a place for somebody to work in this community. The only difference is Vestal's, you know, these guys, well, you're not going to stop this, right? This is, this is supply and demand. People, I mean, how many people in this room eat their house with propane? Quite a few, right? And you're finding propane trucks driving through your residential neighborhoods to make deliveries, but you're not fine with them loading in 100 trucks a day and going down to the Department of Transportation. What's stopping him from going 10 minutes over the border to Pennsylvania? Getting approval in Pennsylvania, supplying jobs to Pennsylvania, paying tax base to Pennsylvania, and still driving through your communities, through your roads, and through everything, like they're doing right now in Vesto. They, they fill up propane across the border in Pennsylvania. PA gets the jobs. PA gets the tax base. PA gets everything. Those trucks drive right through your community every day of the week. What do you get for it? Nothing. What say do you have in what they do? Nothing, because you didn't go to the VA for it. You, you weren't at the town board meeting down in Pennsylvania to approve or deny it. It's going to happen. I would rather see it come to this community, bring tax base to this community, and at least you guys will have a say over what goes on. If they go across the border, you're going to have no say. And they're still going to drive by the school, and they're still going to drive down up and down the roads, and it's still going to happen. So why not take the money? Why not create the jobs in this area? I mean, these guys have run a tight ship. They've answered every question I have, 100%. I'm 100% for this business, 100%. Exactly how it's done. Thank you. My father owns a property that borders this community. I live one mile over this hill. Excuse me, before we get involved in a group discussion, um, thank you, Mr. Bowler. You're welcome. Yes, sir. My name is Michael Grosso. I live in the town of Fenton. I'm a uh, Fenton resident and lived here for 35 years. I'm also involved in the uh, environmental engineering business. And for your information, I have worked for uh, a gas company and I own stock in the Millennium Pipeline Parent Corporation. But you know, folks, fracking has been banned in New York State. It's next to impossible to get a gas, uh, natural gas transmission line installed in New York State. We've seen that with the Constitutional Pipeline, where fracking is banned here in New York. And the only way, you know, to ban fracking, you ban a pipeline, the only way to get the gas to the customers is to load it on a truck and get it to them. Yeah. So, that accomplished, now we have the truck. You know, the potential natural gas customers, are burning oil, foreign oil they're burning, they're burning propane. Propane comes from gas, okay? Petroleum products it comes from, okay? And coal, they burn coal. Coal is dirty. Natural <laughs> gas is clean, okay? Now, uh, propane is oil, uh, fuel oil, propane are hazardous materials and trapped through your community, as these folks have said on the highway and on the rail. They travel down 81. And you have trucks hauling ethanol from Albany. Ethanol, clean energy that burns and you can't see it. Okay, from Albany to Vesto. And you don't realize what trucks now are hauling compressed natural gas from down in Pennsylvania. And hazardous materials are constantly going through Hillcrest, they're constantly going through uh, Fenton, 
and they're constantly going through my poor dick and the elementary school. Okay, they're going that way. Now, give it a choice. Do we want the customers burning foreign oil? That pollutes the air, or propane as made from foreign oil? Or do we want liquefied gas from a foreign country to be shipped into New York City? Well, liquefied natural gas is very dangerous to the big thermos bottle. And they'll pull into New York Harbor. And then foreigners might have a, a plan for that. <laughs> do we want businesses to leave New York State? Oh, I can't get clean energy. I got a new solar, it's going to cost. I can't get it. So, you know what? I'm going to locate to Pennsylvania. I'm going to locate to Massachusetts. Take jobs away from us. Uh, uh, New York City offloader, pay higher utility. You all want to pay higher utility bills? I love paying my nice same bill. I just love it. I turn all the lights on in the house just to pay the nice same bill. I pay fuel oil bills. But I have no natural gas at my house. Okay? Utility bills, uh, natural gas. Now for all you all you folks here, natural gas is not New York State friendly. No matter how many renewable energy signs, how many no fracking signs, the thing is, gas, natural gas is going to flow through the pipelines. And my last statement is, New York is nuclear friendly. I don't see anybody was holding any signs up when Cuomo gave Exxon Energy $7.6 million in subsidies Billions. Billions, thank you. To renew the nuclear power plant. Nobody protests that. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Thank you. That's all I have to say. Yes, they did. They put pipelines to vacant land, but it's very hard to get to, uh, people to approve the vacant land. Here. So, where do you do so people uh, have houses? All right, that's not. Okay, yeah, I'll well, Folks, we need to, uh, to wrap, this, wrap this up, unfortunately. The planning board was scheduled to have their meeting again at, at, uh, at 7 o'clock. So, so uh, unfortunately, we need to drag uh, this thing. Good job. Okay, thank you. Submitted in writing, but I did want to just confirm that uh, the, the district's two letters, including the letter of today, are, are going to be in your formal transcript and, and proceedings, as well as the 239 comments you received, incorporating the village's comments, will be incorporated into the proceedings of, uh, of the board. Yes. Thank you.
layer with quality review in, which is affecting LB as a as a boundary of some of the area barriers. Secondarily, uh, the motion would be uh, to approve the area of variance in accordance with drawings and plans as submitted to the North Road County uh, or the, uh, the Town of Fenton Planning Board, conditional to the life of the lease with Bowen. Uh, the approval uh, is subject to the concerns and requirements as cited in the 239M. Uh, response by Grove County Planning. Um, the, uh, uh, the facility would be 
um, a combination of, like I said, indoor temperature control and exterior drive up uh, type of uh, uh, type of arrangement. The drive up uh, would be behind uh, the building the way the property is situated. Um, so you would drive around the back and, and drive up to your, your storage locker and unload and load and so on. Uh, it would be fenced in the back portion. The, the front would pretty much remain uh, the way it is other than you know, we're proposing a complete facelift to, uh, to take care of the neglect that, uh, that it's, it's seen over the last few years, unfortunately. But uh, uh, I have, uh, that I share with the engineering department, I have some preliminary uh, plans and, and uh, you know, the, the welcome to review and ask questions. Uh, but we're looking forward to uh, to starting a, a new business venture here in the town where we live. So, thank you for the invitation. Okay. If you'd like to pursue site plan approval, you want to catch me on Thursday. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That takes care of new business, old business, the Benton Trucking Terminal, referred to as a natural gas compressor station. We passed a site plan, except we needed to. 239 review, which we got back in the county, planning and economic development, and uh, it was only 31 pages long. And I think they had some input from different people because probably two thirds of this we already went through and approved it. And they come back with a whole bunch of stuff that's already been approved, but there is certain things in it that have not been approved by us. Um, just for some light information here, we're talking two trucks an hour. Everybody starts throwing us 100 and 200 trucks and everything. Two trucks an hour and each truck are about the size equivalent of four automobile section fees. So when you're talking traffic, you got to think about one of these tractor trailers is taking up a space of four vehicles or the course room between them. And when they move either across the Bay Bridge or 88 or whatever, keep in mind, there are only four car lengths. Um, it was pulled just way out of proportion. Um, I must say we've had a lot of people who don't know the difference LPDS and natural. I got correspondence here from people in uh, Fort Worth, and they kept talking about LP gas and how dangerous it was. And it was a bomb on wheels, you know. But it's not LP gas, it's natural gas. And if anything happens to natural gas, it goes straight up into the atmosphere. Don't lay on the ground like LP gas. If there's an accident on the highway with natural gas, a leak, it's going to go right straight up into the atmosphere until so the fire department can contain it. People get all out of sorts with this and talk about the dangers, and it's, it's so dangerous and everything. Um, you really have to know what this is to appreciate it. Um, we had a gentleman come up here and started talking pipelines and everything, and of course he was talking all about fuel oil pipelines, gasoline pipelines, all of the kind of pipelines except natural gas. And yes, there has been several incidents with those pipelines, but it has nothing to do with natural gas. I'm sorry. Um, I think before we get started here, I think I'm going to open this up to the public. We can give everybody a couple minutes to ask questions and see if we can help them out. Sir, your name and where you live. Uh, Joel Luchin, I'm a 
with all due respect, on your two trucks and now with 12 compressor stations, if we have two trucks an hour, that's 24 trucks a day. That means each one of those compressors is going to get visited twice a day. That's 48 trucks a day. Well, oh, fine. Well, let's do that. So that's four times a day that compressor is going to be used. That is totally ridiculous. That makes absolutely no sense. We already heard that one compressor in Pennsylvania gets 50 trucks a day. So with 12 compressors, why do we need 12 compressors if we only got two trucks an hour? Explain it to me. Well, that would be 150, 125 plus. 50 trucks a day is this year what we're asking. And what happens when we get to 12? The compressors are different sizes, so they're different capacities. I have. Well, let me ask you a question. What What would you say is the maximum number of trucks when you get to full capacity that you are going to run on that service? Yeah, the people is 125. So when you get 12 compressors, you're going to have 125 trucks a day in a row. That's the most you ever heard. At this point, yes, sir. At this point. I'm not saying that. No problem. I'm not asking you. you you're going to qualify at this point. I'm not asking at this point. I'm saying when you get 12 compressors up and running, yes. when you're at full capacity. That's right. It's 125 trucks. So are you going to tell us right now, you'll hear if you're going to go above that? Our average is going to be more like 60 to 80 trucks. I, the last the last thing about the road is it's not a question of going through the Route 88. That, that's fine. I worked in Washington. Through Washington, all the time, tank the cars, they break the business. It's not a problem. The real problem is that you are using the only access roads that our children travel every day back and forth to school. We cannot get from the high school to Port Dick on Route 88. Can't be done unless you have a baby turn around. And the same thing with Chicago Falls. The problem is not that you go through the community. I'm sure you'll be safe. I'm sure you'll be fine on the highway. The problem is how are you affecting the access road where all of our children go every day, three, four times a day. That's the real concern. It's not about our safety. It's not about if you have a good safety record. It's no one has to look into it. There hasn't been a study made, and I would assume that the traffic study shouldn't be made. Let's see how it's going to affect school districts. Okay, thank you, sir. Somebody else? Right here. Thank you. Um, first, uh, just a couple questions. First question is, uh, is this, name or where do you live? My name is William Houston. I live in the town of Union. Is this going to be a type one? Are you going to rule on this, that this is a type one seeker action? Possibly. So you're going to do a full uh, environmental review then? Already did. You already did a full environmental review before you decided if it was a type 1 seeker action? This is a type 2 action. This is a type 2 action. This is a type 2 action. Okay, so um, just, a, the, just a quick couple, a couple of comments. I've been researching this activity, the existing facility in Pennsylvania, uh, operated by a different character. They're called uh, XNG. And what I will tell you is, these kind of trucks, they just said, said earlier in the, in the first presentation that this is a brand new kind of thing. It's about four years old, and that's true. These trucks that carry this methane are, are space age. These things are super high tech. They cost $500,000 each, according to my research. And you said methane? I'm talking about methane. I know what I'm talking about here. Yeah. So. First of all, these trucks run at extremely high pressure, 3,600 pounds per square inch. This is double what the Millennium Pipeline is. That's one thing, they're extremely high pressure. The next thing is, they carry a payload of 12 tons of methane. Each one of these trucks, these 40-foot trucks, carry 12 tons. People call them bomb trucks. And yes, not one of them, there's been a couple of rollovers and not one of them has failed yet. But you're calling this a type one seeker action. FERC is not looking at this, even though this is FERC jurisdiction under the Natural Gas Act. This is interstate commerce. Let me tell you another thing. These trailers are shipping containers, which means they're multimodal, which means this is potentially, this little thing that you're proving in the town of Fenton is potentially North American export. We have no idea where this gas is going. 
It could go anywhere. So what I'm asking you is, I want to echo what this gentleman said earlier. I am asking that you all take no action tonight until you look very carefully on what this is all about. Because this is way bigger than the town of Fenton. And these trucks are potentially extremely dangerous. Thank you. It's methane is natural gas. It's compressed methane gas. Methane equals natural gas. Almost precisely methane equals natural gas. Methane is compressed gas. Methane equals natural gas. Do you want to speak? Yes. Name and where you live. Hi, my name is Jerry Wiley. I live in Wego, and my grandchildren and family live in Shenango Bridge. So I'm concerned uh, about the local effects of the my, my uh, son um, drives school bus. Uh, as a part-time job. I'm concerned for that. I'm concerned about the grandchildren who ride school buses. Uh, but um, not many people know, uh, in relation to the Paris Agreement, that 195 countries agreed that we need to keep, uh, we need to keep the temperature below uh, 2 degrees Celsius, uh, more close to 1.5 degrees Celsius, and in order to do that, we need to quickly mitigate and reduce and get rid of methane, which is essentially natural gas. Uh, we are Jerry, going is in there the, a question in this? Uh, uh, we're, we're running real late, ma'am. We're supposed to start at 7, so if you have a question, we'd love to hear it. I, I misunderstood. I thought you asked if um, there were any comments. Uh, so I'm okay. So a question is to you, how is this mitigating meth methane so that we can ramp down the meth the uh, buy time with the with removing the methane in order to solve the CO2 problem. In other words, methane, I'll be quick. Methane being uh, over 100 times more potent a greenhouse gas than uh, carbon dioxide ramps our temperature, average global temperature, quickly up. And so in order to make that, uh, mitigate it very quickly to allow us sufficient time over the next decade or 15 years to solve the CO2 problem, which is a slower, uh, uh, pro uh, a longer problem to solve, we, we, that's our ticket. We need to ramp down the methane. But so I'm asking how you're planning if, if to I do can, that. Since the inception of our company, um, our customers have realized CO2 emissions that were reduced by over 415 million pounds by replacing their fuel oil, their coal, their propane with the CNG. They've also been able to reduce their SO2 emissions by over 9 million pounds. There's almost zero um, particular emissions, and we've replaced, well, actually 71 million gallons of fuel oil with our product. So with the use of the CNG, we have been able to bring, our customers have seen all their emissions drop. And that's the, that's the wonderful thing about the natural gas. Uh, well, while the while the natural, while the CO2 emissions uh, drop at one part of the process, which is the burning part, uh, the whole uh, uh, life lifeline of natural gas starts at the well pad where there's leakage, and all the transmission lines where there's leakage. And the total picture of natural gas is not what's burnt; it's when it's extracted transmission, distribution, and all throughout. And methane being over 100 times more potent a greenhouse gas than natural gas okay, is... Okay, let's get back to the question. In the back, the sunglasses. Hi. Yeah, it's getting dark. Uh, my name is Andrew Kirker, and I live on Central Coast, Central Coast Hill. People know what it is. It's a town in the village of Fort Dickinson. My question is, would you please discuss the liability? Will there be bonding? What happens if there is an accident or a spill? Will the company be responsible? How much money will be bonded? And uh, also, what happens in five years if there are pipelines built and they remove themselves from that property? Who cleans it up? That's my question. There's a question for you, man. Yeah, as far as 
insurance, so we're, we're fully insured. And we're owned by a very large company, clean energy fuels, a public, public and traded company. Big up. I can't hear a word. We're fully insured. We're owned by a publicly traded company called Clean Energy Fuels. So we're fully insured. Our facilities are fully insured. How many times fully insured? I don't know the exact dollar amount, but we're fully insured for the value of our compression station and for the tractors and the trailers in which they're driven. And we only hire professional drivers. We hire, right now we're doing comp uh, business with a group called uh, J.P. Newton, a, tra a trailer company, uh, a company out of uh, West Bridgewater, Mass. They've been hauling uh, fuel oils for the last 50 some odd years. And we'll do the same here in the Big Open area. We'll partner with a reputable firm that knows how to handle the product and move the product professionally. Okay, and if you were to be moved from the property, are you going to be required to clean it up? There's no cleanup. Well, uh, if, if, we, if, if, we, if we were to leave the property, what typically happens, and it's also one of the issues, it, it, it's located within the lease, but we simply just, we, 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 we close the valve to the pipeline, and all the equipment can be removed. There's no contaminants that are left behind. And if there's still? There is no still. Excuse me? There is no still. Nothing is lighter than air. There is no it, secondary containment required. It goes up. It goes up. What about explosion? They do occur. Explosions do occur. Yeah, they do. Yeah. What about when water mixes with natural gas and get petroleum distillates like benzene, which incurs cleanup liability? Being insured for accidents and worker health is not cleanup liability. Can we get you to get your name, no, sir, sir, if you're going to ask a question? Thank you. I would actually make a statement. Is that okay later? No. No. If you could please ask this question. <laughs> All right, who's got a question? Jan, over here, it's a young lady. Joyce Julia, I own three properties in Hillcrest, none of which will be affected, if, uh, one close to Pickle Hill. Concern I have, and I think, you know, we need jobs, I'm not against all that stuff. My question is, one, the people that own the land along the uh, access road, will they be paid? or will their land be taken under eminent domain? The next question is, what will be the responsibilities or the advantages to Fenton uh, due to the fact that those roads are, are taken care of by Fenton and our tax dollars? So who's gonna be taking care of them? Are they gonna be plowing the roads when the roads need to be replaced because of lots more truck? And I agree with, uh, as far as the, uh, the school buses, it's practically impossible to get to uh, 12A on that road when it's school bus time and so forth. So that is going to be um, a terrible tie-up for the schools, not even from the safety point, but just from the traffic point. And, uh, well, ma'am, you want any questions that belongs your first question? And the other question is, I find, and I'm sorry. Your first I find, question is, if you to land from them in a domain, they have leased two parcels of property and that's it. They're and that's taking, all they're going to be taking? They're not taking anybody else's land. Okay, and those two places are making money, right? Well, they're leasing. They're leasing. So they have an advantage, that reason right. they want to be there. Okay, that answers my question as far as that. The second thing is, who is going to be maintaining the roads? Town of Fenton maintains the roads and the tax base that these people's going to pay taxes. Are we sure they're going to pay taxes or are they well, going to better. Well, <laughs> you know what? Unfortunately, the government has some ways to be And the other thing that I find, and I think this is why we're in the position we're in, is it seems to me nobody knew about this. Right. Now, if it started in March, and somebody lives on my street that is very in the area, why wasn't anything put in a bulletin or a flyer or something? And Jim steps my own. Why is, this This is why you have a mess. Because we want jobs, we want things. There's lots of empty land that can be taken. But right behind people's houses, and school where the school buses are and so and that's fine. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Who's next? Right in front. Your name and where you live. 
Um, my name is Vera Scroggins, and I'm coming from Susquehanna County, Pennsylvania, where the original compressed gas terminal opened in February near our homes. And my question is, they already failed the noise ordinance in my county. They're over the uh, noise ordinance, and they have to build some kind of noise abatement. Do you have a noise ordinance in your uh, township? We do have a noise ordinance in our town. And what is it? Uh, if you care to get out of line, the town of Fenton Cove uh, describes it. it. Basically, goes to the occupants and the decimal allowances associated with the residential commercial surroundings. <coughs> so, if you look at our town code on the line, it is section 150 39. The applicant did provide us an initial uh, assessment of the noise considering the pre-project noise levels and the impact of this project would have on noise in the area. And my understanding is that they have since had a second firm do a noise study for the project and I would like them to share their findings and information. Over there. You're up. So we did go out and get a third party opinion of the noise. This is a study and you can read it here. People can characterize it. I think if you go to the last paragraph, there's a summary of While everybody's reading, can I ask you a question, ma'am? Yes. This is this is one of our major concerns when they first came to us with this. Is what what is the noise ordinance that the uh, station in your area failed? What's their level? Do? Well, right now they failed, and, and their noise level was 55 decibels. Our county maximum is 50, and this is only two compressors. How at, much at noise? What distance, ma'am? Huh? At what distance? To the nearest home, occupied home. Oh, really? So, so we have it that has to be to the nearest occupied home. And from what I understand, the nearest home is, from what he said, 853 feet. How, how close is your nearest home? The nearest home is within about 400 feet. Oh, really? What kind of compressors do they have? Are they, are they electric or are they gas fired? I believe they're le electric, but I'm not 100% sure, actually. Is all the category of gas? The category are, of gas. Are they gas? He says, I mean, he knows. I okay. So and he's I'm saying, just wondering, because that is one of our major concerns, is the noise level. So what is the noise level that your study has found, let's say all 12 compressors are running? What will be the noise level? The maximum, if all 12 are running. So what's the 61 you just said? That's measured daytime noise. That's from the highway. So Th that includes the highway and your compressors. Is that what you're saying? Yes, this is the whole thing. Summary done by a company out of New York City. For how many compressors? Four. That's four. That's what's four. For phase two, 12 compressors, the nearest residential property line measured at 49. Measured daytime noise DPA 6165. Projected noise level due to compressors 52. Now, now, the problem that we have, too, with the noise when I go there, and when I also went to Mannheim, it's a continual sound. They're working 24-7, so we have noise that's going continually, this hum that you hear at 50 or so decibels. They're cheap noise. they got electric compressors. And that's the nearest residential line <coughs> that was now to the park, the PEC park, and phase one of four so compressors. I if you're, I know from the station, and I won't drag this out, because once again, we've got to use this all but that, it's one of my major concerns, if I'm glad to ask the question. If you get out near the, the, the gas line compressor in Windsor, 
if any of you people have ever been near that thing, that's a gas compressor and it's very loud. These things, like I said, these guys are cheap. They're using electric compressors. And you can understand an electric motor driving something is compared to a combustion engine driving something. They can keep their noise low. Well, how would you like to hear 50 decibels from what they're admitting to 24-7, a, a continual hum next to your home? We have that in, next to our homes, and that's not a pleasant thing to experience. You'll hear this continual hum. I, I can't help you with that. It's, I, I mean, I've got an air conditioner in my neighbor's side yard that exceeds that, but I understand. And then my other question was, do you have a air emissions, uh, any kind of ordinance for air emissions, or does the DEC handle that? Do they have to take out a permit for air emissions? Because our neighbors are smelling the mercaptan that gets injected into the gas. Some of it is leaking, and we can pick it up. So then what are you doing about that? Is there any kind of oversight on that? I don't think the town has anything, excuse me once again for the butt in, but I don't think the town has anything. But we let the state and the, the federal government do that. The problem we run into with, with smells, bubbles, et cetera, for a little town like that, we, we, don't have any, we don't have anybody to enforce the measure. We let the state do that. We just died in an outdoor way burning fireplace. Did you ever run one of those movies? Yes, yeah, horrible. Yeah. But we just, we don't have anybody, we don't have any equipment. That's a lot of money to measure that. So we let the state, but the state of New York has some. But will the state oversee this, uh, the air emissions on this? Do they? You have to ask the state. Well, I'm asking them. Do they have to file a DEC uh, permit? No, we don't Sir, in the back. Thank you. We have a question. Uh, in case there was an emergency, who's going to respond? Don't press the federal department. Ordinance is limited. Uh, will the schools, who's going to notify the schools for lockdown? Who's going to, who's going to do that? Is the operators of this system that we specially train? There are specially trained three fire departments to do those things. I can't hear you, sir. There are specially trained three fire companies, including the I believe the Hill Press doesn't have a fire department anymore. Oh, they certainly do. <laughs> do they? Yes, they do. I just was there the other night. You better do some research, you know. I don't need to do any research. Yeah. I had a Port Dickinson, I understand, is limited. Is that correct, Mayor? You say Port Dickinson, they're, they're limited, Fire Department? Port Dickinson is very limited. Hillcrest is not. Hillcrest has got about nine members right now. What you're saying is that Hillcrest is fully full Fire Department. They have, about, saying, sir? they have about 20 members now. I don't think that's the case. Port Dick doesn't. Port Dick doesn't, no. Shenango Bridge, they've got about 60 members. <laughs> Port Crane has got over 50 members. Have we got anybody here that can speak to the mutual aid situation in the way Boone County handles it? Um, Shenango Bridge, Shenango, and Port Crane. Who's back? Yes, sir. I'm Walter Hag. I live in New York. I have a question. So, is it possible for you to stand up, sir? I'm sorry. I'm Walter and I have trouble here. <laughs> I'm Walter Hag. I live in New York. I've seen your picture in the paper a lot. Thank uh, you very much. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, so, my question is Are the documents for this application available online? And are you accepting written comments? If I can't comment, uh, verbally. Now, if, so I can you review the documents online? No, I don't know. The documents, you can request, you can request the documents that have been prepared for the project. So if I request the documents or come and review the documents in person, can I comment on them in writing and you'll look at them or at least accept them? Probably not. Okay, so even if I submit comments and writing, you're not going to look at that. Okay. We're going to make decisions on this. Is the decision going to be made tonight, final? Anybody else with questions? A question? Yes, ma'am. give you a context. Um, my question is, do you have a road use agreement? Does your town have a road use agreement in writing? That's my first question. We got the DOE approval for this project. 
I didn't ask you that. I said, do you have a road use agreement in your town? Does the town of Fenton have a road we use a agreement? Because if you don't, you might want to consider having one with the increased traffic. We do have one associated with uh, construction and significant activities. And when I say significant <coughs> activities, it's primarily put into place associated with the potential for fracking and the truck traffic that comes with it. And it was also put into place associated with the potential for logging operations and the impacts that those and construction, the impacts that those would have on our that's what we currently have in place. We currently have one in place. Yes. Do, do, you, do you have a comprehensive plan in place? Does your town of Penn have a comprehensive plan? Yes, ma'am. And if so, it does. How does this project align with the goals of the comprehensive plan? It is not objected by the, excuse me, I cannot say that. Uh, our comprehensive plan as different zones within the town, and within each of those zones, whether it's commercial, industrial, limited industrial in this case, we have acceptable uses within each of those zones. And this application has been determined to be an acceptable use in our limited industrial zone. And then my third question is, have members of the planning board and the town looked into any of the scientific research that's been conducted on the impacts of air pollution, particularly compressor stations on children's lung development, on increase in asthma, along with other health impacts in various members of the population. If you haven't, so that's my third question. Have you looked into the research on the impact of compressor station to homes? What type of compressor station do you uh, both electric and gas, and ones associated particularly with this type of project. Have you looked and read the research, the most no. recent scientific research? I, if your interest and commitment is the safety of your community, I suggest you do that. And I also would ask you to hold on making any decisions since this group has done some research. I'm from okay. the town of Shenango, we've gone through this. So you really want to do your research? Well. No, you spoke to us. <laughs> Anybody else right here in the middle How many planning board has homes that would be impacted in the end the area? <coughs> You'll have to choice. What, what do you mean by impact? Okay, my property at Chenango Street yeah. goes down, and we will get some dust, whatever, you know. Uh, I'm not terribly concerned, okay? My other properties are. But you're making decisions. Nobody knew about this. Do you have a map? Is there anything? Do you have some map? Yeah. Well, There's nobody, a map right there. Okay. <coughs> nothing. Why do you think this is such a big thing? Because it was not put out to the public until the newspaper published. Okay. No, this was all for their application. <coughs> it's, it's no different than if you had a, you wanted to build a house, you had to build it where it was zoned. And you come in and get a permit. These people here come in and got a permit, they're looking for a permit. They want it zoned for. We don't have to zone everybody every time we have to build something. Well, I can build it, I built it uh, three foot from somebody's uh, side. Uh, Yard, uh, there would be an impact if something would be done. This is a big thing with an issue to a lot of people, and yet nobody knew about it. He lives in Oakland. Jim lives in Okay, I know where Jim lives, and how many live where it's going to be impacted personally? George, we can't, any decision we make, excuse me, man, in a town center, you can't say, well, as long as it doesn't bother me, I'm going to pass it. That can't be our attitude. I, I we have to say, if this bothers anybody in the town center, if it's not the right thing to do for anybody, then it's a no. Well, it's, we, don't, we don't base it on, no, it's okay with me as long as it's the other side of the state park. That's I, not the way we do things. And I'm being curious, <coughs> you know that. However, <laughs> the point is, it is a thing of a not myself particularly. And I think the fact that people did not know about it, we should have gotten a bulletin out 
that this might be coming up, and what did the public think about it? That's all I'm saying. Careful, yours is coming up. <laughs> okay. Sorry, where are the glasses? All right, thank you. Um, there's been some false choices presented, namely that there is this gas facility that would bring, be brought into Fenton, or else you have no development and no economic vitality. I submit to you that there are towns and counties around New York State that are installing solar. And uh, there are 11 towns in Orange County. Mr. Chairman, can we get a question, please? I think solar is a great idea. I think that polluting the atmosphere is a terrible thing. But that's not the question. If you've got a question, please. I'd like to get all the way to I just, uh, I, I have a very urgent request that you treat this as a CEQA one, and that you mount a public hearing on this matter. Uh, there have been all sorts of questions that have not been asked and not been addressed. There's, been a, there's a lot of information that we would like to convey that you're telling us you don't have time to consider. But we have a lot of information. So let me... Do you have a question? Yes, I do. Um, some questions. Do you have a metering system at this facility that monitors the amount of methane released in the transfer from the pipeline to the compressors to the trucks? Do the trucks vent? Um, evidently, there's leakage. Vera can speak to that in Pennsylvania. If there we is answer your leakage now? there, there Could will be a leakage answer your question? in New York State. Would you please answer the man's question for him? That's all right. Sir, this is a completely closed system. There is no leakage. We have all the emissions, and our electric compressors, and all the gas emissions. And yes, it's completely closed. Okay, there's a malfunction, and that's all we can This is a closed system on a daily basis, there are no emissions. Thank you. You have a question? Yes, I just want to ask the planning board to please more research before you pass this tonight, because I think there's a lot of unanswered questions in this 239, and I do not feel you have enough information. Listening to people here know more than a lot of us in this room, and I think there's an awful lot we need to know before this comes into this town. We have regrets in four or five years. Okay. Responses that also came from the applicant 
where obviously they are the significant experts. So if you folks could share, uh, I guess in summary, any highlights, sharing what the questions or concerns were associated with the review and responses where you had them. You're on. So we have to take the time to answer every question and every point in page 239. So we'll have a record copy of that. Not, we do not need and are not subject to federal and state air quality permits. 
So there's a whole five or six pages in there on air quality. That's, that really is, our equipment doesn't require it. The next big thing was noise. Everything we have is electric. We gave initial readings from the, from the equipment manufacturers, and the bottom line on that is the noise at the park and at the very closest residence is not discernible from the background noise that already exists in, that, in those areas. If you're standing in the park, when our professors are running all 12 of them, you won't know the difference. It's not discernible is what the noise study says. We provide that to you as well. The next thing was safety and security. The 239 didn't cover it much. It's where we started. Our first steps here were to talk to the fire chiefs and talk to emergency service people. We did that right off the top in January. These people work around natural gas every single day. You have it in your homes here in this community. And this is no different other than it's compressed. And pressure does make a difference. Be the first to admit it. But it is not any more flammable than it is in the form that it's in the pipeline or in your homes today. And in fact, because it's lighter than the air and we do everything outdoors, we are safer than the gas that's inside your buildings, your industries that are here today. Another thing on, on, on safety, we train all of the fire departments. We started with an initial, we do a fire safety analysis for the installation. We then go and do a classroom training for the fire departments to include all mutual aid departments. And then we bring them to the site and do a hands-on to show them where emergency stops are and what could happen in an emergency. And we do that not only once, we do it on an annual refresher to all of the fire departments. In addition, we work directly with the state hazmat to go to different counties and communities uh, to make sure all along the route, all along the route, fire departments have the chance to, to view our trailers, touch and feel the trailers, so that in case there is ever an event, they are fully trained. We, right now, Jay Parent, our safety officer, Jay stand up. He's here, he will accompany us everywhere. Safety is our first priority. He has trained 144 customers for our 27, 144 fire departments for our 27 customers in six states. So again, transparency, we are here to be part of the community. We are gonna pay our taxes. We are going to work with people. We're going to work the best we can and hopefully be welcomed into the community when we bring in the jobs and bring in what we, what we do to the community. Flood happened in stormwater. We answered all of the questions. Those are there. Um, there are questions flood plain. As you know, we're raising up our base level to the 500 foot, 500 year flood level. Um, everything is going to be elevated. We're actually borrowing. The, the gravel from an adjacent site, so the offset in the floodplain, we're not going to increase the flood to anybody else's property by being there. So, um, community facilities, the site has no adverse impact on any of the community facilities. This goes back to noise. Um, that, that's really what it's about. So, what it boils down to, we answered all of the questions in the 239. There is an outstanding issue that involves the, the town of Fort Dickinson, the village of Fort Dickinson, and the schools. And we have tried, we haven't had this report but for, for about eight days, but we met with the school system. We have not had a chance to meet with the mayor of Fort Dickinson. Um, He's here. I understand, but we were, we were told we, we couldn't, is what we were told. We were more than welcome to, and I think uh, Superintendent Gill is here. I mean, we, we did come and talk to Superintendent Gill on a couple of occasions. We are not trying to force anything down anybody's throat, and we're willing to work with people to try to make it work. As far as the roads in Fort Dickinson, you have trucks and trains in Fort Dickinson today that are significantly more dangerous than what we're going to do fully. That, that is a fact. You can talk to any emergency service person. They would tell you they'd rather have a truck of our gas going through than a truck of gasoline or propane. However, I understand there's a weight limit issue. That's really about the structure of road. We solve some of our school problems, and we're in a, we're in a dilemma here. We, we don't want to affect the school. We want to work with the school to be as friendly and as community friendly as we possibly can be. But Fort Dickinson at this point told us we can do it. By the way, the route that was chosen for us was chosen by TOT in the town of Hunt. We didn't come into the community and say, we're bringing trucks down this road, we're going to throw them by the school, or throw them through Fort Dickinson. 
We went and we asked the questions. And we were told to take this route. So we're, we're back, we're backstabbing, we are. But that really is the only issue that is left on the table after you read all of our comments, is how do we get in there and how do we get out? I think getting in is pretty much solved. Those are our empties. Most of the time we'll be coming from the east to the west. We're going to come off on two. It's a direct across, and if anything, it's in flow with buses and should have very little impact on the current traffic problems at an intersection or have any conflicts with buses. So the real question is, how do we get out of there? And again, we're trying to find a solution. We're not here to slam things down people's throats. Okay? I, I have a question. I have a question, if I can quickly ask. Questions or not? I have a question I would like to ask. Are you putting no. any gas in the pipeline in New Hampshire or Vermont? No. Reveal, reveal that. I'd love to talk to you, sir. So who said it? I would not. We were told. We were told. Again, who I, 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 not, I, I may have said that. But we were told not to talk. So many times we're not talking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Question time is over. We're going to take questions from the board. Okay, Jason, do you have any questions? You alluded to working with the routing concerns by the school district. That's an ongoing process. Folks, I'm part of the Shenango Valley School Board, so this does get home for me. However, I can support your project. So as long as you're still continuing to work with the school district and address that, I do appreciate that. Thank you, Jason. Rick, do you have any questions? Um, two, two comments, I guess. One, in this first stage, do you intend to pay your access to both? When we discussed this some time ago, there was discussion about the maneuverability of your vehicles on the site, to the uh, loading areas, and then back out to the surface. Comments in the 239 associated with why are these curb cuts so wide? The reason the curb cuts are so wide is basically because the service road is so narrow. We've got cruiser barriers on one side, but we've got no shore on the other side. In order for these folks to get on and off the road, it's a requirement for some large curb cuts. Um, Chris, we worked through the maneuvering and getting trucks in and out back and forth. Does Changing the haul route, haul route that may cause us to go east on the west service road have any impact on those curb cuts? No, no, no. Okay. The other two is software from the University of I'm sorry? The other two is software from the University of One of the concerns, too, that we expressed through the whole process here was that we were looking forward to any tracking of materials back out to the service road that the town is responsible for maintaining. And Chris and I had a discussion a while, a week or so ago, associated with the extent of paving in what I'll call phase one. And so my question, I guess to you folks directly, is in this phase one, are you willing to see to it that we have pavement at both curb cuts? And pretty much all of your operation will occur on pavement. Yes, I can certainly do that. But we are planning on going to one point. The working discussion, the working discussion here is about uh, costs and things on because of some money um, and the bill that we need to deal with. Okay. Um, so the answer to your question, the answer is yes. If we change that in phase one, we will come back to you with, with that change and what exactly we need. I'd say that's a working discussion at the point of at the moment the plan is to pay it every single time. Second point. Uh, we've had a lot of comments from folks tonight associated with us and um, recognizing that if there is something that's close to a continuous building as these trucks are coming and going over time and what becomes ultimately background noise. Is there or are there pieces of equipment or different means to reduce that noise level other than what comes with that stock compressor? 
yes, and you can sort of doubt because it's not is it is it out of tune that you should this be coming in from downstream and, and the folks are coming back to what's associated with that to reduce that decibel level by a few. That's absolutely so yes. yes. So that opportunity does exist in fact we have potentially some concerns down the road. And we're happy to get that word on the discussion of the school we're comfortable with that. We can't go hire 50 drivers until we know we can build it. So, but we do have an RFP and we are working, to, working with local companies to provide fuel um, delivery already. So, now again, in the long term, we may even want to fill these vehicles with the same natural gas. That would be nice. Well, if well, this natural gas is so good, how come you don't run your trucks on it? <laughs> That's what our company does. Yeah. And ultimately, we had to try to see if you track this. The problem in the past is that the trackers haven't had enough hold for the for it for the yeah. problem. But now the technology is finally catching up. And so with the new with the new trackers and the trackers we've been looking at, we can reach the same speeds and the same low grade.
The only thing I would do to these guys if they had to do that, they'd have to come to Fort Train and turn around the back for four, four miles extra. But it's also an option. What else you want to do? Thank you. 